So Brandy sang the national anthem at the National Football Conference Championship game. And because the American National Anthem is such a good way to measure a singer and what they do, I wanted to ask a particular question. Why did Brandy choose the key that she chose in order to sing at this championship game? So let's get into Brandy's choices. Hello everybody, happy new year, officially. <laughs> it's me, O'Neal, and we're back to actually talk a little bit more about voices, reclaiming your voice, all of the things. I saw a wonderful trend on Twitter. I saw that Brandy was trending, and of course if Brandy's trending, I'm gonna look and see why it was. I saw that it was because she sang at the NFC Championship game. I've talked about Brandy a lot on this channel, and so I wanted to find a different way to talk about her. Specifically, I wanted to see why she chose the key that she did for the the American National Anthem. For those of you that don't know, the key of a song or of a piece basically shows us the notes that are available to a singer or to a composer or a pianist or anybody that plays an instrument or does music in general. <laughs> When you take a song like the American National Anthem and all of the notes and the systems that are within those notes, you can move that entire system up. <laughs> or down. <laughs> depending on the key that a singer chooses for a song, you might be exposing a singer's strengths or weaknesses depending on where they choose. And a singer that is well prepared will have chosen a key that actually works well for their voice. This is a little bit of what I talk about in my new podcast, the Reclaim Your Voice podcast, where I talked about technique guarding your singing. Allow good technique, the things that you learn about your voice to guard your emotional expression. I say that to say that Brandy in singing the national anthem has to keep in mind her own strengths and weaknesses and find the key that works best for her to showcase her at her best. So let's think like Brandy for a sec. What are the things in the American National Anthem that Brandy would need to watch for? Number one, the range of the American National Anthem. So the lowest note of the American National Anthem is found in the beginning. Oh, say, say, can you see? Right? So I'll just kind of mark that here. Oh, say, can you see? And the highest note of the American National Anthem is found at the beginning and in the middle. And the rocket's red glare. And then at the end again. Oh, the land of the free. That's the note that's at the end there. Now the major scale actually goes through about only half of that range. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. But if you want to continue in the range for the American National Anthem, you have to do another scale. Do, re, mi, fa, so. This is one and a half octaves. It's not for the average singer, okay? So that's the first thing that Brandy's gonna have to consider. And depending on where Brandy places this song, she might end up in the belty, belty, belty parts of her range or the basement of her range. And that leads me to point number two as to what Brandy would need to consider in singing the national anthem. What does her voice do in her highs and what does her voice do in her lows? So here's the thing, when a singer is going higher in their range and carrying up the thicker portion of their voice that is what most people call the chest voice, the higher that they go, the more risky it is because your chest voice has a limit. So when Brandy gets into the high side of the Star Spangled Banner, she's going to have to really support her sound in order for her to grab a really clear note. And if she raises the song to a key that's out of reach, she's gonna be in a place where she's gonna be straining or maybe even crack. Now on the bottom side of Brandy's range, this is actually part of what she's known for. Her voice just goes deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. And as she goes deep, she takes on this more husky, foggy tone. And it's something that people love. I love it. But the lower that you go, projecting that sound can become harder and harder. So Brandy's gonna have to find the sweet spot in her range where she's not descending too low and not ascending too high. And that's exactly what she did with the key she chose. She chose the key of F major. I'm gonna try to play this on my phone. Ah. We got that husky, foggy tone on the bottom of her range in the beginning of the Star Spangled Banner. Ah. And the rock is red glare, she covered that high part as well. Hey.
she put herself in a safe zone. Now, the reason why Brandy is able to plan so well is because she's such a seasoned singer who's listened to her voice, listened to her body, and figured out what works for her. But a lot of you are like a deer in headlights when it comes to understanding what your voice can truly do. And a lot of you are even not confident in your voice to even figure out what you can do by just even listening to yourself. And so that's why I've created a resource for you to be able to begin that journey of jumping over your own lack of confidence and actually finding your voice. So I want you to go to reclaimyourvoice.ca slash masterclass and there you're gonna be able to find some wonderful information that's going to set you up to start your voice journey well. Because singing isn't this exclusive club for only the talented. For you, especially if you have a desire to sing, it's absolutely absolutely available to you because you've been given this a voice, right? So I want you to go to reclaimyourvoice.ca slash masterclass and activate what you've already been given. It's yours. You just got to use it. Now, here's the thing about Brandy. Now, I remember the wonderful Delisa Archer first talking about Brandy's voice. And when she said something, I considered it and I was like, I think she's right. Um, she was talking about how Brandy's voice is much lighter. I feel like she's a, li a lyric soprano because she has a very warm lower register, but it doesn't necessarily project. Because Brandy goes so low, you would think that she's much more of a mezzo soprano. However, the mezzo sopranos are voices that tend to be a little bit heavier. When you think of people like Beyonce, like Jojo, like Yolanda Adams, those are the people that kind of occupy that much heavier space. But Brandy's voice is heavy in its belting range because Brandy's a little bit more chesty in her approach. Now that we started to hear her voice ascend into more of the heady falsetto moments, we're actually hearing how soft it actually really is. Is. Now, the reason why I say that is because at the end of the American National Anthem, she actually puts in an extra note on the top of free. Free! Free! So it's got me like, Brandy, Brandy, who are you trying to fool? Anyway, it was bright and it was clear, but it also points me to the third thing that Brandy would need to consider in singing the American National Anthem, and that is the vowels. And not just the vowels, but the vowels and also the notes that the vowels are placed on. So there are certain vowels that um, depending on how you sing them and in what part of your voice you sing them, they can be easier to sing or harder to sing. Now, I could go through a whole bunch of vowels, but I'm just gonna focus on the free at the end. Usually when people place that E vowel, they spread. What I mean by that is they uh, use their jaw, they lock their jaw, they kind of squeeze the sound through this, this E, this flat space. Free! So that E vowel is already a problem vowel, but now here's the, and this is why I think that the writer of the song wasn't necessarily a singer singer they put that e vowel on the highest note in the song so if i were to sing it or the land of the free it doesn't lend itself to being very comfortable for a singer, which means that that vowel can act as a ceiling in terms of where you would want to bring the song. You wouldn't want to bring the song too high where that E vowel is too high. But what makes me think that Brandy was super comfortable in the key that she chose is that she added that extra note. Free! Free! And the comfort that she had there, I was like, Brandy, Brandy, you Oh, you got the range. Anyway, <laughs> but yes, this is kind of like uh, me just kind of fanning out and geeking out on, you know, what I thought, you know, Brandy's mind could or could not do. But um, I don't want it to be the end of the conversation for us. So if you loved Brandy's performance, simply put it in the comments below. Uh, what I also want you to do is subscribe to this channel because this is the place where we reclaim your voice, reclaiming my voice. Happy New Year, everybody. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Okay, bye everyone.